So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the, some of the different options that you have for noises in Octane Render. So let's make a new material. And remember, you can make that material directly from here from the node editor. And what I'm going to do is actually let's or not, let's not do that. I was going to dock the the node editor, but let's just keep it there floating for. So let's we we already seen the noise, which is uh, just a regular noise. You don't have you don't have really many settings to tweak. But you also have other type of noises like the marble that gives you other different settings too to adjust. So I can actually offset the noise here. And of course, all of this you can animate in cinema. You can uh, increase the omega, which is doing something here to the, the actual noise inside the variance and the octet so you can find different types of uses for that you have a turbulence too which kind of looks like the marble but it's I think it's adding even more details and it's it's a little bit hard to see but you can actually if you Let's try and see if we get a faster feedback here. If you see here and I move the offset, you can see how you can actually animate that in your texture. Maybe some something like an alien texture or something like that. You can uncheck the turbulence and it's, it's going to be pretty much the same noise as before. And of course the gamma. And let's take a look at the rich fractal. And let's get rid of this. So again, just different types of noises that are there at your disposal. This one is a little bit more on the contrasty side, so Let's see if I can get a gradient in here. Let's get some more space. And then really crank that up. The gradient is how you would colorize the two. Yeah, you can you can use the gradient to uh, as a color correction tool to crunch the levels or, or the tones. But you can actually also use it as a colorizing tool to colorize your values. So if I want this to make blue and, I don't know, purple, I can do that and get really crazy with this. And of course, you can always layer all of these things. If I get, let's say, a... What do we get? What do we want here? Let's say a turbulence. And if I add that turbulence to the texture one, and then this texture to texture two. So it's really, it's really endless, the, 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 all the layering that you can do in Octane. And because, because we're using the nodes, it's easier to see what's going on. If you try to do, if you would try to do this, with the regular Cinema 4D material, it would take a long time to actually understand what's going on. So let me get let me get two random colors here. Maybe like a, let's do red. And remember, right now it's looking like that because it's it's trying to get 50% of each uh, texture because we don't have anything in the amount. But if I do another noise in the amount then we're gonna get the black and white as a mask and again I always like to go into the solo crank this up 
So wherever is black, we're going to get one of the noises, and wherever is white, we're going to get the other one. Let's see here, solo, and there you go. So we're getting we're getting a lot of different textures. If I increase the contrast here, look at all the different tones we're getting by just mixing that there. So it's pretty powerful, the layering that you can do with uh, with the notes in Octane. Let's see here. The other pretty cool node that we can use, let me just leave this here, it's the falloff node. So the falloff node, it's pretty much the same as the, if I make a new material here, and bring up my Cinema for the materials, it's pretty much the same as the Fresnel that we have here in Cinema, where it can be used depending on it, depending on where your camera is looking at the object, it's going to give you a nice gradient to it. So if I go here, let's drag a fall off. And we're going to add it to, let's add it to our diffuse just so we can see it. If I solo that, this is, if I solo it, it's going to be easier to see and it's also going to give us faster feedback. So right now it's it's making it's giving us a gradient because of the the way our we are looking at our object where our where the the outer parts of the object are being shaded with white and the the parts in, right in front of the camera are being shaded with black. So you can see that it's it's actually a, a kind of a mask that we can use. And if we wanted to inverse this, we can actually just use the invert node here. Because some nodes have the invert function built into them, but some don't. So for that, you would just use the invert. But let me show you one of the ways that you can use this fall of map. So if we get a mix, and so that it's easier to see, let's just get two colors in here, red and green. And we can use that fall off as a mask and pipe that into the diffuse. Let's solo this texture here. So the lights also affect where the fall off is being used. So if I go to my lights here and turn them off, We're getting a, a more green from here because of the lighting that we're getting, and this is from the light bounce. But it's a it's a really interesting effect because you can actually drive this. Let's say that we wanted to see, let's say that we wanted to see maybe some roughness only on the on the other parts of the material. We can use a fall off note for that. So if I make a noise here real quick. And kind of how they did the Spider-Man film where you would just see the cross yeah. hatching mm -hmm. on the very edges. Oh, that's a good one to know. Yeah, this node is really powerful. And I've used it um, a few times. Not all the time, but uh, I've used it before for like holographic kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. with the fall of of course, you can also add that to your opacity. So watch what happens if I add that to my opacity here. Sorry, trying to fight screen space. Let's actually try this. It's add, because it's a mask, it can be used for opacity. So you can see what it's doing there. And again, you can, Anything that's, that has uh, black and white values or color or anything like that, you can always use the gradient node to control how much of that is being seen. So if I increase the, the white value here, we're going to get more of our shader ball here. So it's really powerful, but let me show you what I was doing with the roughness. So let's take a look at the 
node here we're going to use a gradient to make it more visible and then solo here and let's repurpose this mixed texture node here and let's make this black because we only want to see the So let's see here. Let's see. So I always like to check. Okay, so we're getting, it's actually the other way around. This node needs to go here. And then this one needs to go here. So we're getting our texture only on the outside edges of the, the outside parts of the material. And we'll make it, we can make it glossy so that we can get that roughness map in there. Maybe that's way too much. So yeah, we're getting some rough reflections and only being affected on this part because of the way we're looking at our object. So it's a really, really powerful node right there. Let's see what else we can take a look at. Dirt. Yeah, the checker is, is just a checker texture, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and you don't really have a lot of you don't really have a lot of control i've actually never used this but i can see how it could be useful for like uv mapping stuff or maybe just adding a checker pattern to it Oh, the random color.